Catching up with some more of our competitors here at the Wasota Auto Racing booth. We're with Chad Funt here. I, I want to talk to you about a handful of things, Mod 4 racing specifically. The, you've been a Mod 4 guy for a while. You've been a successful Mod 4 guy for a while, and you're one of those guys who's put other guys in your cars, built cars, done a lot of different things for the Mod 4 world. Talk those people who maybe don't know a lot about what a Mod 4 is through what a Mod 4 is and how fun they really are. Sure. Uh, Mod 4, fairly in entry level. Uh, Going to be cheap, easy to get into. Um, race them at a handful of central Minnesota tracks and Wisconsin or uh, uh, Wyoming as well. Um, yeah, we just we put them in, put them together, try to try to get into a car for probably under twenty grand. So per perfect segue. So I was going to ask cost versus other classes of cars. You know, a entry level class. When somebody thinks about an entry level class, it's a pure stock, it's a Hornet. A Mod Four is not certainly an entry level, but kind of entry level at the same time. You can jump into one of them for for not a crazy amount of money. Right. Weekly maintenance is really cheap. There's not a lot to do. You're still going to put your work into it, but once you get the car, it's easy. I mean, doesn't take up a big lot of space. So if you're uh, you're in a small garage in town, that works just just fine. So. And t talk about some of the guys who who maybe you've raced against in that division for a long time. Dean Larson stands out to me as a guy who's been in a mod for forever, who's been very successful. Now you've got guys like the Holquists, and you've got you know Tommy Bodden who's running really well, and you've got guys who have made a name and made a home in the mod four division, and they seem to be loving it. Absolutely. So those guys have been there a long time, and just this year got a couple different 13-year-olds uh, coming in that race go-karts, and that's we're seeing that transition a lot. Uh, this is a good thing for them to get into. They don't want to get into the front-wheel drive, get those bad habits, and and it's it's a place for them to start and move up. They don't all stay there forever like me and Dean Larson. So, Talk about your racing a little bit. You know, We mentioned some of those other guys, but you're another one of those guys, like you said, who's been in that division for a really long time and had a really successful career. I've been in there for a while. Uh, not always your front runner, but uh, towards the front, I'm just there to finish. So, uh, working on always trying to find more parts, trying to find a way to make the class more affordable. So we're working on that. Good transition to XL1. Let's talk about uh, XL1 race supply. So you you got you can tell the story, but you got involved in this a few years ago now, and, and the main reason was to try to keep Mod 4 racing around and, and kind of stay involved. Yeah, absolutely. So what we do is um, why well, stock a lot of parts. A lot of stuff that you can't find. You can't can't just go to Speedway and get a lot of this stuff. So we're getting that. Uh, also, supply chassis to people. Um, just whatever. I mean, we got some contingency programs for for new guys getting into the sport as well. Basically, win some track championships. You get some money if you're running my chassis. Uh, things like that. And, and that's a way to keep guys around, right? Every dollar matters. That's it. So one thing I really focus on is if I knew anybody that had a race car sitting for a long time, those things don't do any good in the garage. We need to get them on the racetrack and just keep them out there. There's not enough of the cars to go around. So, Fact. You, you and I talked about the new uh, engine program here a minute ago before we went on. Uh, talk me through where we're at with that situation right now. So currently the engine that's in the Mod 4 is from your mid-70s Ford Pinto. It, it's old. Uh, parts are getting hard to find. They are not reliable any longer. Um, so... I worked with Wasoda last year. I ran a I ran a concept engine all year that did get approved now. So it's a it's a Ford Fusion engine. Um, going forward, that will be legal. It is going to probably cut the cost in half for the first time, and, and probably a sixth for any time that you have to replace it after that. So so guys can get those where any salvage yard, and you're not going to be opening up those engines. So. so that's the best part, right? Cost saving for sure, but availability is almost more important than that, isn't it? Right. We all like to have a really cool race sounding car. Uh, this maybe doesn't quite check that box, but hey, hey it's going to be cheap. So Keeping you on the racetrack is more important than how cool it sounds, right? Right. And I, I ran it all last year. It was competitive um, within within a half of a place on average over, overall. So. Talk about the uh, memorial race you guys do. We should we should touch on that as well. Is that happening again this year? That, that thing has turned into something really, really cool the last couple of years. Yeah, actually, we've done three or four of the memorial races now. It's a semi-annual, never really sure. Uh, basically, depends on if we can get my wife to agree to run the thing. So uh, I'm not sure if that'll happen yet, but we've had, you know, almost 50 Mod 4s at one time. So pretty damn cool. Which is insane because there there are barely 50 in the world, right? I mean, the, the cool part about that event is obviously you've, you've done it right. The pay is great. The, the extra stuff is great. Uh, the location is great. The time of the year you guys have done it in the past is great. But to have all those guys, like you said, nearly 50 of them, which is certainly the most anywhere that I can ever think of, is pretty fulfilling, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's really cool deal. I mean, hopefully we can keep it going. 
Um, would like to turn it into a series at some point, but we're not quite ready for that yet. So, A lot of work going into something like that. Absolutely. You know it. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about PRI real quick, and then we'll let you kind of wander around. It's lunchtime here. We probably all better uh, go get some food. But talk about what, uh, where you've been, what you've been seeing, what you've been doing so far. Uh, just, man, if you haven't been here and you get a chance, you got to come down. It's, it's pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, you can see what's coming down the, down the pipe. You may not see it next year, but at, at some point, it's probably going to find its way into the racing. Yeah, the interesting part to me at this event is you see the same people, but you see how much the technology has changed and the, the new products that are coming out. And almost everybody, especially in the dirt track world, is here, and they're unveiling new things at this event. So you're, you're right. If you want to be on the cutting edge of it, you got to be here. Absolutely. And I will say this. I'm seeing Wasota working really hard at, at trying to find new sponsors and stuff down here, and it's a perfect place for them to do that. So. Yeah, and again, you know, the, the, the Wasota people, it, it, this is the perfect time to get rolling on that kind of stuff, and, and, and they are doing a really good job so far on that, and I, I expect that will continue on throughout the winter. Sure does look like it. Yep. Very good. Anything else you want to break before we get rolling? That's all I got. Thanks, Chris. There you go. That's Chad Funt.